All right, uh, good morning, everyone. My name is Riley Kovaleski. I'm the Educational Technology Specialist here at Marywood, and we are going to be talking about Brightspace for students. So from the student perspective, what Brightspace is all about, how you can upload assignments, how you can respond to discussions, how you can take quizzes and look around your content in your courses, and generally just navigate. So all important stuff to know as we completely switch over to Brightspace starting right now. So if you're taking a May math Master course, summer one, summer two, fall, into the future, it's all Brightspace all the time. So Moodle is now officially a thing of the past. So let's meet Brightspace. I'm going to share my screen right now, get that set up, and we should be good. All right, so here is the Marywood homepage, and I bring this up because there's actually um, a Brightspace link right at the bottom. I'll zoom in a little bit so you can see it. It's right here next to forms and directories. So you click on Brightspace and it opens up. But if you would rather type it in yourself, it is learn.marywood.edu. And that brings you to the Brightspace homepage. And because it's a vanity URL, so it's learn.marywood.edu, no matter what LMS or learning management system we have in the future, that will be the link. So learn.marywood.edu, going forward, that's the permanent link. Here in the username and password fields, you will use the username and password that registrar gave to you. So if you didn't receive a mailing with that information, definitely reach out to them. Um, their email is registrar at marywood.edu and their phone number is 570-348-6280. So you can give them a call and they will help you out with your username and password. It's the same one that you use for Marywood U portal. So if you remember those credentials, then enter them right here. Most of you will have a um, combination of your first initial and last name. It's whatever the first part of your email is. For me, it's a little bit different, but for you, it should be something like, in my case, it would be R. Kovaleski. So you click Login, and Brightspace opens up. So we got a couple things to look at here. Um, first up being this white mini bar at the top. Now, we call this the mini bar because it stays up here all the time. So no matter where you are in Brightspace, whether that's in a course or if you're in your settings, this bar stays the same. So we have our Marywood University logo here, which if you click on it, just brings you back to this Brightspace homepage. Um, that's pretty self-explanatory. This stays here no matter what, and once you're in a course, you will actually get a little course homepage link right next to it, but we'll look at that in a couple minutes. We also have the waffle icon in the center of the mini bar. And you can see the little text there that says select a course. So if you click on the waffle icon, you'll see all courses that you have access to. And you might notice one that says become a Brightspace Brainiac. That is actually our student orientation sort of to Brightspace. And anyone who has logged in within the last week or so should see this in their list of courses. Now this is a resource that you can use whenever you like. Um, I will show it off just so we can see some sample activities but it's super useful because it tells you all about how to navigate Brightspace, some best practices for um, getting notifications and things like that. So it's super useful and we'll take a look at it very soon. Um, but any other courses you have access to, whether they be for the summer terms or even for the fall, will be here in this list. It'll be longer if you have more courses. Um, and a nice thing you can do is if you have a lot of courses and you'd rather pin a couple of them, you definitely have the ability to lock them to the top of your list. So there's this little pin icon on the right of the course name. And if you click on that, it pins. And then if you were to refresh the page with that little round circle in the top left, it pins your course to the top of your list. Now for me, that doesn't make too much of a difference because I only have one course in here. But if you had many, like you're taking many summer courses or multiple fall courses, then you can pin these courses whenever you need to. And of course, you not know, obligated to, but if you want to unpin them at any time, you just click the pin again, and next time you visit the page or refresh um, it, then it'll be unpinned. So that's our waffle icon. Then we have our communication center over here. So the first one is this little email icon that says message alerts. So if you click on that, you'll see that you can actually send instant messages to your um, fellow students or even to your instructor if you so choose. And there's an email function within Brightspace. 
So if you click on email, you can actually email your instructor, you can email fellow students, you can pretty much email anyone here from Brightspace and you would just kind of type in your to email address, so whoever you're sending it to. You can add carbon copy or blind carbon copy just as you would in Gmail. Um, and then you can change your subject to whatever you like. You can get rid of this like stock Mary would you area here. And you can actually come down here to the body text and use any of these fun tools. And this is actually a good preview of what you'll be able to use in your discussion posts and any text area on Brightspace. So starting at the beginning here, um, we have insert image, which is pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> you can go into your computer and find an image here and add it. You can also quick link if you so choose, and your quick links can be from Google Drive if you set up your Google Drive account. I believe setting up your Google Drive account just involves signing into your Google account. Um, we also have some URL you can add or you know, if you want to reference an announcement or something that you saw on the website here on Brightspace, you can do that. And then there's things like symbols for mathematical equations. If you had a question about something like that, you can insert lines, emoticons, things like that. Also along the bottom, you'll see we have an accessibility checker, we have spelling, we have um, like coding, you can alter the coding, but really you can just type whatever you like in here and send it off to whoever you like. So this is a nice, easy way to send a message to your professor if you have a question about something and you want to do it right now in Brightspace instead of hopping over to your Gmail, um, because it does use your Marywood email. So um, whenever your teacher responds, it'll be straight back to your Marywood email, and you won't have to worry about checking it in Brightspace. You can also upload attachments or record video or audio if you'd rather talk it out or you know, gesticulate to your heart's content, and then you could just send it off and the email is gone. Um, one more thing I would note about the emails is if you are so inclined, you can click the settings button in the top right and make sure that this save a copy of each outgoing message to the sent mail folder option is selected because that means whatever you send here from Brightspace, it'll go straight to your sent mail folder here in Brightspace. And you may have seen that in the previous page. Um, but if you haven't, it's over here on the right when you click on that email button and you can see all of the mail you have sent previously. So moving right along, we have our little notification subscription alerts rather. Um, these are for your message boards that you subscribe to. So I believe it is automatic that if you respond to a um, discussion topic in Brightspace that you are subscribed. And of course, you always have the voluntary option to subscribe to a forum if you want to kind of see what's going on. So any of those alerts will appear in here. And you'll get a nice little orange bubble here saying that you have something to look at. Finally, we have notifications over here. And this is if you get like a grade published and you want to go view it, if some content has been published in your course, or if you have like an announcement or something to view from your instructor. So this is a good place to look as well. And again, you'll get that little orange button bubble to tell you that something is new. So that wraps up our communication center. Essentially, um, we have our instant messages and emails here and subscription alerts and notification alerts. So it's the prime place to go if you want to look at um, notifications or talk to others. Now, the last part here is like the account settings area. So if you click on your name, you actually have the option to go to your profile. And this is a lot like Moodle in that you can add a picture here. So if your instructor asks you to add a picture to your profile so they can put a name to the face, um, you can change your picture here. You can also add like a tagline or a little bio about yourself and any interests and hobbies you may have. And you can click save and close to make sure that those stay in the profile. Going back up top, we have um, my portfolio, which will be kind of covered in a different set of trainings at some other point in time, because it's a whole big thing. But essentially, you can have e-portfolios here on Brightspace, which is very exciting. We also have notifications here, which is super important. Um, you will also see a link to update your notifications on the Brightspace homepage. So this is where that page link will take you. So you can see here, um, there's a little sort of thing about the Pulse app. So you can look at the Brightspace Pulse app. This is a very nice way to access Brightspace. It shows you all of your courses and all of your notifications. You can do most, if not all, of your co 
coursework through this app, so it's worth downloading. Um, and we may be able to see a little bit of that later if I'm able to get that working. Um, but otherwise, if you scroll on past that little advertisement, you'll, you can see the contact methods here. So we have email address, which is defaultly set to your Marywood student email. Um, we also have the option to register your mobile number. So if you'd rather get text notifications about some things, then you can register your mobile number and get a text every time something happens. And you can actually dictate what kind of notifications you get. If you scroll down a little bit here, you'll see that you can get instant notifications and you can choose what you want to get notified about. Um, so we have everything from activity feed, which your instructors might use, um, announcements, assignments, content, discussions, grades, and quizzes. So say you want a text or email notification every time you get a new grade. You can do a check mark in each of these, and this right column is for email. So that means I'll get an email every time I get a new grade. Same thing for um, discussions. If I want to get an email every time a discussion that I am subscribed to gets a new post, then I can get an email this way just by checking that box. Um, I can also see when my feedback was updated if I check that box. So just kind of figure out what you would like to know about instantly and just check the box next to whatever you're interested in. And once you're done, you can just click on save and those settings save and you will get emails or texts depending on what you selected for each of the items that you selected. Next up is account settings just in general. Um, these include like the font size across your Brightspace page, um, whether you'd like to see any pop-ups as just dialog boxes, which means they appear on the screen and not in a separate window, or you can have them as pop-ups in a separate window, um, things like that. So there's a lot of accessibility sort of items in here, um, and you can play around with it to your leisure. Um, once you are done, though, you can just click Save and Close, and it saves all of your settings that you may have made and brings you back to the home page. So um, here I will t t tell you all about the nav bar up in the green here and then the rest of the home page, and then we'll move on to what a course looks like. So this nav bar changes depending on where you are in Brightspace. Um, on this home page, you can see things like My Brightspace, which you can get awards from finishing that student course that I mentioned before, and that we'll take a look at. You can see your calendar for all courses and some class progress. You can also click on the Discover tab, and you can see all sorts of courses that you can self-enroll in, or if you've been asked by an instructor or program director to enroll in a certain program, like the internship for counseling and student development or um, other things that are present here, this is where they will be housed. So um, if you're not sure where to find a certain thing, let us know, but the Discover page does have a search function, so if you're looking for something, it's worth searching for. We also have the calendar, as I mentioned before. The calendar kind of shows you all of your events, and by events I mean like due dates and things like that for all of your courses. Now, I currently only have one course, and it doesn't really have any due dates, so I don't have anything here. But if you did, you would see it all lined up here with details about which course the um, event is for and things like that. Going right along, we still have the help area where you can view video tutorials, any documentation. And you can also do a system check from here. And this is cool because once you click System Check, it kind of looks at your browsers and your Java and your cookies and sees if everything is OK. Um, so it does all the checking for you. This is just for your own peace of mind that you are running at optimum levels for Brightspace. And really, Brightspace doesn't require much, so you probably are running at optimum levels for Brightspace. Also here in the help area is the Marywood Help Desk, and it brings you straight to the site for that. So if you wanted to submit a help desk ticket about something here in Brightspace or otherwise that you are unsure about and want some help with, then click on this help desk area, sign in with your credentials, and input a ticket. Finally, here in tools, there's a whole bunch of little things here, um, but you don't really have to worry about those. The tools are more important once you get into an actual course. But before we do that, let's just finish up the home page real quick. So here at the top, we have just a general message about your text notifications or email notifications. 
We already went over this, but if you click on this link, it brings you to that notifications page. So you can actually go through and um, figure out those settings for yourself. It also has a link to download the Brightspace Pulse app. So there's a nice handy link here for you to do that if you're viewing this on your phone. Um, down here we have some announcements, which we put out across the whole site. So you can see like um, this is a survey for rating our online services for improved support. So important things like this will show up from time to time. And when you do get an announcement that is site-wide, you will get a little notification up here. So you'll see that it happened even if you don't see it on the home page. On the left, we have our help desk chat, which is just um, a nice, easy way to ask questions about anything you have questions about. <laughs> so it asks you to include your name and email address, and you could just type away and someone will respond back to you. As long as it says chat now and ETS is here, that means that someone is actually online and ready to help. It'll say that the chat is offline if no one is there to answer. So if you can see a text box here, it means that someone is ready to answer your questions. All right, and then on the right here, we have the My Courses widget, which is the same thing as the waffle icon, but in more detail. So you can actually see here we have categories. Um, we have different semesters and, of course, the clubs and departments page, which is where the student course is housed. We also have, um, like for me, fall 2021, I have a course happening then. You can see on your course blocks here in the widget that there are start dates to be seen. Um, here it says this course doesn't start until August 16th. Now, if you're familiar with the academic calendar, technically fall courses don't start until August 23rd. But in Brightspace, you have a full week's access before the start date of the course. So technically, this course opens on August 16th, so you can access it. There might not be any content for you to view a week before the course starts, but you can actually get your bearings, look around if there's anything to see in your course. You also have access to courses two weeks after the official course end date. So um, if this ends in mid-December, then I have until two weeks after that to view my course stuff, download any resources that I want to keep, and things like that. So that's something to keep in mind. Um, there's no more um, professors having to make courses visible. So if you don't see a course that you should see, um, it's no longer on um, the instructor to make these things visible. It is just here a week beforehand. So if you don't see a course for some reason, make sure that you are completely registered for it. And one last thing here on the left, we have the calendar again, but it's a widget. So you can see all of your events here. And then there's also a Brightspace orientation that you can launch, which is quite lovely. This brings up a little dialog box that you may have seen when you logged in the first time, and it tells you about how to find your courses. And then if you click the next button, you can look at the My Courses widget, like we kind of looked at already. Then you can see how to contact your instructor. It gives you some instructions about that. And then the Brightspace Pulse app, and it gives you links for iOS and Google Play and then help yourself, some technical support items, and dismiss, and it's gone. So if you ever want to see that again, it's right down here on the bottom left of your home page. Alrighty, moving right along, we're going to start looking at a course. So I've been talking about the student course on and off throughout this little demonstration, and I'm going to show you how it works and what kind of resources you can find in here. So first we'll come up to select a course and then I'm going to click on become a Brightspace Brainiac. So when you open up a course, it comes up to this course homepage and course homepages typically have a nice large picture on the top with the name of the course or a little message depending on the instructor. And then right below that there is usually an announcements area. So any announcements that have been made, any recent announcements will be here in the announcements widget on the course homepage. So you see there may be some links here that you can look at, um, some things to download, some things to view. You will see anything that is relevant here on the announcements. So here, for example, we have one that says, hear ye, hear ye, and it's posted by EdTech Services. This is where your instructor's name will be, and the date and time that it was actually posted. So you can see all of those items. And you can see that it is a way for your instructors to share information with students. You can also click on any of these little items here to open up things. 
So the sample video file, it actually downloads. I believe the audio file will do the same. And then this is actually a link, or a PowerPoint rather. So if I open that up, I can see the PowerPoint that was added to the announcements. We'll see how it opens up. There we go. So here's that PowerPoint that we downloaded from the announcements. And it's just like any other PowerPoint. Bunch of slides, opens in Microsoft PowerPoint. So fun stuff. You can also click show all announcements. So if you've missed one before, you can go back and view them all. If you keep scrolling down, your instructor might have the activity feed um, going, which is a pretty fun sort of social media-esque thing. Um, it has a post on here. It's an interactive way, whereas the announcements are kind of a one-way street. Instructors talk to you through announcements, but you can't respond. Whereas with the activity feed, you can respond to anything here. So you can see we have three comments already. We have a couple people saying activity feed. I'm going to respond. Uh, you could just type into like a little text field and click post. And there it is. Hey, everyone. Now everyone can see that. <laughs> if you keep scrolling down, we have an assignment part of the activity feed. So this was added a little bit ago, last week actually, and I can submit right from here in the activity feed. So it's worth checking out if your instructor is using the activity feed because it gives you a nice interactive way to look at things, but also it's just kind of useful. All right, so if we come on down, you can see a little sort of profile on your faculty. Here we have Bruce Moose and Maxis Gillette. So um, there may be a little blurb about them. If they choose to include their Twitter, they can do that. And then on the right, you'll see course content at a glance, which is super, super cool. So this directly correlates to the content tool in your course. So if you look at this, you'll see different modules. And if you click on a module, you'll be able to see things that are inside that module. So this is one way to navigate your Brightspace course, but I highly recommend doing the content tool, at least for the first time, just to get your bearings. Um, but these little circles off to the right are progress indicators. So this one's 100% because I already looked through each of the resources and completed them by Brightspace's standards, so I have 100% for that module. That just means that I completed 100% of the resources. It's not by any means a grade. So I keep talking about the content tool, but if I come on up to the top, you'll see that it is here in the navigation bar. So if you click on content, um, you will see the table of contents first and foremost. So here we have all of the modules listed in like a list form, and you can go right on down and check all of your resources right from here. My favorite way to do it though is by clicking on each module individually so that you just see that module's resources instead of going through all of them all at once. This little block indicates how many resources you have left to view. So I only have four left, and I can see here on the left, three of them are in this third module, and one of them is here in the welcome module. You'll also see you have bookmarks, so you can bookmark anything that is in your Brightspace course, and I'll show you how to do that in a little bit. And the course schedule shows you the schedule for this specific course. So the calendar that we saw before was for every course. The course schedule is for the specific course that you are in. So let's click on a module, uh, Navigating Brightspace. So you can see up here, we have the name of the module, and we have a little bit of context and a description to tell us what to expect from the module. So we also have a progress bar here to indicate how far along we are in the module. And then we have our little resources. So this one is a web page, and when I click on it, it opens up to this HTML content page that the instructor created. So you just kind of scroll on down. It could include videos, it could include text or audio or pretty much anything. Um, but you kind of just work your way down the page. Um, you can click videos to watch them. You can see like accordion menus. So you can click on them to look at things. Not every instructor will have pages that look like this, but in case you encounter one that does look like this, you'll know how to navigate it. So I mentioned bookmarking before. If you want to bookmark an item, you just click on the little bookmark icon 
and it adds it to your bookmarks. And if you click on the content tool again, you'll see that you have a certain amount of bookmarks and I have that web page there. And if you would like to remove the bookmark, you can always click on this little arrow key and click remove bookmark and now it's gone. Um, the content still remains, but it is just no longer in your bookmarks area. So this course specifically has a lot of web pages with content on them. But if you come along to the third module, you'll see that there are different things to look at, such as like a sample link to a website, a sample link to a Google Drive item, and a sample file upload. So say your instructor uploads a link to a website. If you click on that link, it'll open up within Brightspace. So it's not going to open up in a separate tab usually. Sometimes it can. But most of the time, it'll open up within Brightspace, and you can still use every link like you would if you opened up in a separate tab. You can also bookmark these links as well. So if I come back in the breadcrumb trail to the sample resource types, um, we have sample link to a Google Drive item. Your instructors can actually add Google Drive links that you can live collaborate on. So this one is just an Excel spreadsheet where people who saw the spreadsheet entered what kind of song that they're playing on repeat these days. So we have a couple different entries here, and this is all people putting in their own music choices. So you can type whatever you like, and everyone who has access to it in the course will see it. So that is the benefit of a Google Drive um, link in your Brightspace. So if you ever see something like this, it's because you can edit it and go to town and have fun. Um, another resource type is the uploaded file. So we have a PowerPoint, for example. If I click on this file upload, it won't actually download to my computer, though sometimes the formatting gets a little bit strange. Um, but you can actually look at this PowerPoint within Brightspace without actually having to download it. So that's kind of nice. Again, you can bookmark these things as well. So if I come back to the table of contents and come back to my module number three, um, there are a couple sample activities that I want to show you. These are like the top um, most common activities, I would say. Um, quizzes are also a thing, but for the most part, quizzes are pretty much the same as Moodle quizzes. So there's not too much to learn there. Um, but here we have two different types of assignments. We have a text submission assignment and a assignment file submission. So let's click on the text one. So you'll see that assignment come up in your content. And when you open up an assignment, it'll give you some instructions on the top. And then if it's a text submission assignment, you'll see a box to submit your answers. If it is a file submission, as we will see in a minute, there is an upload button. So the instructions here are, what are three words to describe Marywood? My text submission would be maybe community, um, togetherness, which is arguably the same as community, and nostalgia. I think those are three great words to describe Marywood. Um, note that you have all of your um, editing tools up here at the top. And you also have this fun insert stuff button, which we didn't see before in the emails. But if you click on insert stuff, it lets you add video notes. So you can add a video response to something. Um, or you could even include a YouTube video if that's something you need to do or an embed code. So insert stuff gives you some more options. But this is my text submission. I'm happy with it, so I'm going to click Submit. And once you submit, um, you can see with your text submission, the submission comes up top. And you can add another one if your instructor allows, but usually it's one and done. You also see that a confirmation email has been sent successfully, so you know you're good to go. So now if I come back to the top and go back to our sample activities, I'll show you how to do a file submission. So I'll click on this assignment as it would appear in your content tool, and we have some more instructions. So this one provides a direct link to the assignment, offers a dedicated space for questions by using the comment feature. We could access the assignment to submit the file. So we're just kind of going, we're going to hit upload and then submit a file. So upload brings up a little file picker here on the computer. I'll just upload this slideshow you would upload whatever you are ready to submit for this assignment. And then if you so choose, you can add some comments like 
thank you for your consideration or something like that. You don't even have to leave a comment, but if there's a box here, it means you have the option to leave a comment if you so choose. So we'll click submit. Now that submission is submitted. All right. So those are two types of assignments. Um, those are really the only ones you will encounter in Brightspace. So not too hard. And then finally, we have try a discussion yourself. So we have discussions in Brightspace. They are slightly different than the discussions you are used to in Moodle. Um, there's some different terminology. So instead of a discussion forum like you would have in Moodle, you actually respond to discussion topics, as you can see underneath this um, little link. So you'll be responding to discussion topics by creating your own threads. And then you respond to other students' threads. So we already have the description here underneath the link. So it says, answer at least one of the following prompts, and it includes four of them. So which discussion view or settings do you think will be most useful to you? What are your thoughts? How do you love Marywood? How do you practice self-care? So fun little items. And then we have to reply to at least one person. So if I click on this, it brings me straight to the discussions tool, gives us the same description we saw in the content tool, so we can see there's a couple people who already posted things, which is great. You can click on any of these to read them, and we will in just a little bit. But I'm going to start a new thread and say my title for it is self-care practices. And maybe what I'll say is I have recently picked up cross-stitching as a move towards self-care. It's really therapeutic in a creative sense. And it results in fun projects and artwork I can share with others. So it's a multi-win situation. So depending on what your instructor has provided for you to respond to, um, it could be multiple paragraphs or just one. Um, but once you're done, you can see there's a subscribe to this thread box. So if anyone replies to you, you can see who it is. You get an email or you get a notification in Brightspace. Um, you'll also see up here you can do a video note. So if you were asked to respond with a video, you would click on this insert stuff, click add video note, and you can see yourself right here. <laughs> I don't know why my camera is so dark in that one. Um, but then you just click record webcam video. It gives you up to 30 minutes to do something and then you can click next to continue and add it to your post. But once you're ready, you click post, it adds to this topic, and there we go. It says I posted it on June 1st, great. I'm subscribed to it automatically, also great. And then you can see at a glance how many unread posts, sorry, unread replies are in here, um, and just kind of go to town that way. So if we have to respond to someone else, let's try, um, Let's try this one on self-care. We'll click on it. And to reply to someone, you would just need to click reply to thread and you get that same text box that you did before. Um, and you can see you can reply to someone else within the thread. It's kind of like Moodle in that way. So I'll click reply to thread and be like, um, I can definitely relate. Self-care is important. Sometimes life gets in the way. Here's to working on that. And then click post. So you saw there that we also had the option to add a video note again, so we can add videos if we like. But otherwise, I responded to um, Kimberly, and now we have completed our discussion. So if I come back to this recommended area, I can see that all three of my things have been completed because I responded in a discussion and replied to someone. I uploaded something to both assignments, and now all of my resources are done in this area. So that's great. That's an example of um, activity completion. And if we look back at our course content at a glance, we'll see that all of our modules are at 100% except for the welcome module. <laughs> so we have oh, 85.7. So I still have to work on something in there. But you'll see that I think I was at 42 before, and now I'm at 85, so we're getting there. 
But those are pretty much the three most common activities, um, the two types of assignments and then one discussion. And then in the quizzes tool, um, if your instructor uses the quizzes, it's pretty much a simple sort of click the start button and then continue through the quiz. Um, if you do have any questions as you're going through your Brightspace courses, obviously reach out to your instructors. They set up the course so they would know best what to do to help you walk through it. But if you have any technical questions about how to use a certain tool or if something isn't submitting right or you can't see your feedback, definitely reach out to the help desk and someone will be in contact with you. So honestly, um, we wish you the best of luck going forward with Brightspace. We're all still learning, so we completely understand that there will be questions and we welcome them with open arms. <laughs> so we hope that you have a great semester, a great term whenever you're starting class, and it was great talking to you today. Have a good one.